Water, the warrior beverage. <clears throat> Welcome to Viking Preparedness. I'm Pastor Joe Fox. So, when one does analysis, uh, one gathers in lots of information um, to start developing a big picture, and then you start trying to put one, starts trying to put pieces together uh, to discern a pattern, if you will. Um, and with that, there's a lot of pieces of information that, while they look interesting at first, end up not applying uh, to the situation that we're analyzing, whatever that is. But you have to gather it, because for all you know, that could end up being the key piece, right? So a lot of stuff comes in, and then you got to sift through it. We all do this on a daily basis. Um, to one degree or another. Driving is a perfect example. Um, when one is driving, one is taking in all kinds of information and you're making patterns in your brain and you're dealing with the important stuff, hopefully. <clears throat> I used to um, do a lot of stuff with world affairs, if you will, and I used to be really switched on, tuned in, and aware. Um, and I have access to nothing that you don't have access to uh, right now. And in fact, I suspect that several of my listeners have access to stuff I used to have access to that I no longer do, right? And so you actually are more knowledgeable in things than am I. I also um, have tried consciously to unplug a bit, a lot, from the world, if you will, um, I try not to concern myself overly much with um, just day-to-day -day garbage, what color Britney's panties are, you know, who's winning Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> yeah, I got garden to deal with. I, my fall garden's late going in, you know, stuff like that. But I still try to keep in tune with what I consider the big stuff. The problem for me is, in analysis, that I'm really not personally sucking in enough information sometimes to, to see things um, on time, my schedule. And so some of this could be a call for help to some of you all. Um, here, let's just get to it, shall we? I remember years ago... The New Agers all being about Planet X. I think it was the next big thing after Y2K, right? Y2K fizzled out, and so everybody started jumping on the Planet X thing. And then um, there was, you know, 119 did a big thing, even though they say they didn't. They did with the Tetra, whatever, Blood Moons thing, you know, and stuff coming into the atmosphere. You know, ah. I put all that into a big pile and <laughs> bunch of... Bunch of nut birds, <laughs> which is what people say about me. So, you know, hey, turnabout's fair play, right? Um, and I mean, people calling me a nut bird is fair since, you know, I called other people a nut bird. Um, but there may be something to it, and I'm not tracking on it, and so maybe some of you all could send me um, some information so that I can school myself, if you will. And specifically what I'm talking about is this. Um, and I guess we'll back up and set the stage a little bit more and then come forward. I know that drives some of you crazy. Um, things are going on, right? And most of y'all who are switched on already know this, but like Germany, uh, for the first time in a long time, st restarted their civil defense program. And they told their uh, populace, hey, y'all need to have 10 days worth of food, five days worth of water uh, on hand uh, in case something happens, right? Well, I think that's excellent advice. I think it's interesting that they said 10 days and not two weeks. Is that a European decimal place thing? You know, I don't know. Um, but they said more than that. See, I've started doing some digging uh, in the last two days. They also said have cash on hand. Again, smart move, but they said that too. Um, and then something else I found highly interesting was in addition to food and water and cash, which just makes sense for everybody, they said to start um, not fortifying, um, strengthening shelters houses, things like that. You know, we're talking hurricane ties and bolting foundations down and, and uh, shoring things up. That got me thinking. What's that about? 
Um, it could be. Let's just dismiss it. Let's let's grab the easiest example. They had a committee. We need to just get more ready for civil defense. We've been slacking on it, and the committee people are talking, and one person's like, hey, while we're at it, we might as well, you know, look at our bridges and structures and make sure they're better, too. Could it be as simple as that? Or it could be that they're expecting some changes coming. You know, biblically... Um, there's all kinds of stuff, and I may be preaching on it this Shabbat. I've got to digest it and pray about it some more. Um, but, you know, Yeshua, Jesus says there will be wars and rumors of wars. Don't worry, the end's not yet. Um, he says there will be earthquakes in diverse places. To me, and I've been following earthquakes for a while, um, notwithstanding the last couple months where I've been kind of tuned out of the news but for me you know there's always been earthquakes so what does he mean when he says there will be earthquakes in diverse places and for those of you not not into that um it's jesus talking to the disciples they say how are we going to know when the end times are going to be and he goes well here's some signs to look for and one of the signs was you'll see earthquakes in diverse places well there's always earthquakes all over the place so that's earthquakes in diverse places right so that doesn't really help anybody i, I just got in my in my head I started tracking earthquakes 7.0 and above, right? And for a while, when I was actually on the internet all day long as part of my job, I had a little 3x5 card in my cubicle, and every time there was a 7.0 or bigger earthquake, I'd write it down in the date. And in my mind, I was like, hey, if there's ever a 3 unrelated 7.0s in like a you know 10-day, 2-week period, uh, my attention's going to be gotten. Um, so that's something to think about. Uh, we're hearing a lot from not from kooks with beards living in the woods but from you know scientists and government officials uh we're hearing a lot of things about some interesting things you know the the uh the earthquake zone cascadia uh official documents coming out on that official briefings and stuff coming out on that you know the ring of fire right our portion of it or also um, the magma zone you know the super volcano caldera that's under yellowstone things like that um, we read in the Word that in the end times, this world is going to rock and roll. Um, and, and things are going to change. Do the governments know something we don't? Usually they do. <laughs> right? Um, why are, is Germany picking this time to tell their people to prepare? Again, it could just be, eh, they're just telling them. Guess what? Czechoslovakia just did it too, evidently. Like last week. I know, I'm behind the time. Some of you are all over it. Um, so Czechoslovakia is doing it. I had a lot of people poo-poo me and say, oh, the, you know, no one's going to war with Russia, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, you know, the governments think they might go to war with Russia. No one, everyone knows nuclear war is not survivable. Uh, you know, many first-rate governments would beg to differ with you, and they're spending a lot of your tax dollars to ensure that they survive a nuclear exchange. So it is survivable. Um... They're planning on surviving. Why shouldn't you? Um, and so there's that going on. Uh, Russia making big moves, man. Remember when I said if Hillary gets elected, I think that a war could start with Russia. And then a lot of you misunderstood me. We wouldn't start a nuclear war. No, I think we would start a regular war by just poking the bear, poking the bear, poking the bear. And not knowing that the bear was going <laughs> to come at us with, you know, all four paws of claws and teeth and bulk. Wah! And nuke us. Oh, that'll never happen. Yeah, well, a lot of y'all are, are assuming that nuclear war is all out. I'm not assuming that nuclear war is all out. That's why my analogy with the bully and popping him in the nose. Um, could pop him in the nose and he could quit. We could be the bully in that scenario. Go back and look at the other video. Um, so there's that going on. Russia's, you know, restarting some kind of or starting a new. Again, I, I've just started seeing it. Um, military divisional units on there as you're looking at it um east coast right across from alaska uh they're bulking up of course by ukraine poland's starting to get a little itchy um you know worried um on the medium picture, not the super big picture, on the medium picture it's all about oil, and pipelines and control, and flow, right? Um, there's a bigger picture than that. You know, we're not really fighting against flesh and blood, right? Which brings me to kind of the point of this video, because I kind of started out saying I laughed at people with Planet X and Nibiru and all that. 
and this is where I need your help. Please send me some links. Now, here's the deal. The, the way my YouTube channel works, if you put a link in to your comment, sometimes it goes into a holding box until I find the time to go in there and, and release it. Um, that's okay. If I, if I watch a link that you send me and I like it, I'll release it so other people can see it. Um, is there something coming into our solar system for real? Or is it just like one of those conspiracy nut job things? Is there like something moving in that is going to change things and rock and roll things and make the sun stand still in the sky? You know, whatever, metaphorically or, or physically doing it. Is there something coming into our solar system that the powers that be know about and they're trying to tell us without telling us? Um, because, you know, the, a big thing is, you know, there's a meteor. It's coming in. It's going to strike somewhere on Earth. Do we tell the people or not? We could do more harm by telling them and panicking them. You know, you've seen the movies, you know the theories, um, and it's true that those conversations actually go on. And so do the powers that be know that something is coming and they just don't want to panic us, but they're trying to get us as ready as possible? Are governments positioning themselves to take um, advantage of the chaos that is created when something happens? You know, having your forces on alert and pre-positioned with plans to do something, continuity of government type thing. Um, it just makes sense from a government standpoint. It's kind of like you deciding with your neighbor what you're going to do in your neighborhood if things go crazy. Deciding it ahead of time. Put you a step ahead of, you know, the competition, if you will. That's my question. Is something coming? Something wicked this way comes, but is there some kind of solar space, planet, galaxy, solar systems, <laughs> Louis Farrakhan spaceship coming in. Uh, if you know about that, if you can find me good links that describe it succinctly. I, guys, I don't have time. I don't have time to watch a video for an hour. I don't have time to read, you know, 40 pages of densely packed, no space, no white space stuff. Yeah. Give me the bottom line up front. Uh, back it up with some facts. This is what I'm looking for. Um, something that I can look at. And if I find good stuff, I I'll put it back out. Um, but it's interesting. The governments are starting to beat the war wagon, get their forces ready. Uh, they're starting to tell their people to get ready. If they're telling everybody to have 10 days worth of food, five days worth of water, that's like every Joe Schmo out there. Uh, aren't you smarter than that? Shouldn't you have more? All right. Let me know what's going on. I'll see you out there.